So, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce Norbert Reining, uh, who will give uh, a talk today. Uh, Norbert is a man of many faces. He works at uh, actually three uh, institutes, two at Vienna University of Technology and one in Milano, if I'm not mistaken. No, Siena, Siena in Italy. Siena. Well, I'm not employed anymore, that. Uh, but uh, his hobby is, uh, is uh, mountaineering, and uh, he provides uh, as a guide uh, uh, through mountains of Europe and maybe uh, others as well. And uh, he's a uh, Debian developer, so he is deeply engaged in the uh, open source uh, and uh, free software. Uh, and uh, he will talk today about his development of new thing in uh, TechLift, namely perhaps uh, TechLift manager who gives uh, new possibilities to us tech and TechLift users. Thanks a lot for introducing me. Thanks a lot to the user group here for inviting me. It's a, it's a great honor for me. And I was a bit surprised, I mean, to giving me here a talk of one and a half hours. I was a bit nervous, in fact, um, because normally I speak about mathematics or I speak as a mountain guide. I'm a mountain guide. I speak about technical things in mountaineering. So um, it's a great honor. And I must honestly say it's also I'm feeling ashamed that I don't have much more time um, some people already know I just came this night from Germany from um, yeah, coordination of the mountain guides and I have to leave tonight from Vienna with the train to Italy. So you see I'm a bit, but I'm happy to be here and again thanks that you gave me the option. Um, yeah, the talk is about Tech Life 2008. This year you know, I will speak about this, uh, the history a bit and um, yeah, how I was involved, I mean, I think I started around 2000 or 2001, I don't remember exactly. To, don't, don't do a lot, just compile binaries for Tech Life for the platform on Alpha Linux binaries. And then a few years later, I had this idea to package Tech Life for Debian. And I think that was the worst idea I've ever had because it's so much work. And yeah. That was then 2005, Tech Life 2005, then just managed to, to enter Debian uh, Edge, and 2007 will come into Lenny, and 2008 is not packaged because I don't have any time, because I'm working mostly on Tech Life nowadays. And yeah, and then since, well, I would say it was Bachotech one and a half years ago, so 2007, we had this discussion about the rehaul of tech life and what do we want. And then it happened that just for fun, I implemented in Perl some ideas. And these ideas somehow remain and still stay here. And this is the outcome, of course, there are many more people invested work here. And what I want to present here today is, a, well, it's twofold because I'm, I know that many people here are also of technical interest. So I will give a first part on the left side. This is the part for users. It's just people who want to use, who want to install and want to use and compile and create nice documents. And well, what's here on this side, new, uh, new parts. And then in the second part, I will give some technical uh, details. So those who are not interested in the second part can just fall asleep uh, after the first part. It's fine. And yeah, that's somehow what I want to do. OK, <laughs> Tech Life is quite old the project. I think it started in 1993. Um, there was this idea of this touch tech user group to, well, to ship a CD with tech for all possibles. That was also the starting point of the tech directory standard group, working group. I mean, nowadays we know that all systems we have are just, oh no, okay, not, not Hans Hagen's context because the, he puts everything in one directory, but every other tech uses this tech directory system. And that was the start. A bit later in 95, they started the first real CDs. It was based on Thomas Esser's T-Tech, Thomas Esser-Tech. Uh, why it was already multi-platform, 
that was the idea, and it was Unix based. By the way, if you want, if I'm speaking too fast, unclear, or you have questions, just stop me. You know, it's no problem. It's real now. Okay, then in 1996, it was the first edition. Sebastian Rath started, and he was responsible for a long, long time for for Tech Life. He was the one who just pulled it off and, and it kept it going for many years. Um, I, I don't listen all the editions, just some points which might be interested in 2000. This is around the time I started working for it, it but it was not my point. It was this non-free software was removed. The point was because Lehman wants to print and sell it, other people want to sell it. You cannot put something on it with special selling clauses and no copy clause. And it's also our conviction that, that we want to have free software that people can do with the tech life images, whatever they want. Yeah, in 2002, the seventh edition Mac OS uh, support was added, which was quite nice. Oops, uh, typo error. In 2005, uh, addition of the Swiss scripts to, uh, pe yeah, people involved a bit remember this, that created a bit of chaos because people were used to call the tech config and, and then suddenly there were the Swiss. But I think nowadays it's quite settled also in the mind of the users. And in 2006 and uh, seven, Xitech was added to, to Tech Life. T-Tech just finished working. I mean, T Thomas Esser just gave up after you see how many, I mean, 10, 12, 15 years of working on, on T-Tech. So we are really grateful and still nowadays many of the central scripts and work is done with, with code from him and, and so I think he's one of the, the founding stones here and it's important. And at, at that time around between 2005 and 2006 also Carl Perry took over managing Tech Life and is doing it till now. Carl Perry I think he's known for font naming for Tech Info for hundreds of things. Okay. Um, yeah, some features of Tech Life, what, what's, what's about, what we want to achieve therein. Uh, we want to achieve that it's complete. Complete in the sense that we, everything from the comprehensive Tech Archive network, which we can put, we do put into Tech Life. So it's, um, yeah, it's just <laughs> nice. I forgot to, <laughs> I wanted to add some photo. Yeah, you see, it's all of it. Okay, then it's multi-platform. That was from the very beginning. That was the idea that we want to support not only one system, not only either Windows or Mac or Unix systems, and under, in the Unix world, not, I don't know, only Linux on, on whatever architecture or Solaris. It should be as broad as possible. Uniform across platforms. This is really new because up to last year we had a huge, well, huge, there was, yeah, a divergence between the Windows world and the Unix world because the scripts didn't work the same, there was the support was not the same, and it was also one of our aims to unify this, to have just one system which works on all the same way. It's also the reason that you can have a file server in a department and just share it via Chiefs, via Samba to, to a Windows client, to Unix client, whatever. This the, then also features and, and aims of the rewrite which was taking uh, place in the last two years was that we have practically daily updates. So if something is coming into the comprehensive, upload it to, the, to some C turn node, then normally with a delay of about a few hours, it appears in, in our subversion repository and we will see later on how it makes its way onto your computers. And then that's already also with the first line, it it's follows the Deb Debian free software guidelines with a few exceptions. And I'm fine with this, I'm a Debian developer, but I can put on my Debian head when I'm working for Debian and my normal head when I'm not working for Debian. I agree completely that we do this exception because Debian has a problem with the GNU free document license and and for example, a typ typical example which we put into Tech Life is the font installation guide, which is a very nice document in PDF, but we cannot put it into, into Debian because not everything to compile the document from the source is present. So 
that's the reason we, we try in Tech Life, we try to do the best for our users. We don't ship any commercial stuff, we don't ship anything which you cannot copy release, but we sh ship nice documents and we st when the source code is present. So, also, what did I jump? No. Okay, then, hmm. okay, also what was done in the last year was that we created a new installation program. Those who remember former times is that we had one installation program for Unix that was a shell script, and we had some others, uh, mostly from Fabrice, who wrote a graphical installer for, for Windows, and for Mac, someone else had to write something. So it, we tried to, to make it uniform. So now the installer is it's the same. It's the same Perl code. It's Perl script. It runs on all platforms, and it allows, furthermore, it allows the installation from various sources. I mean, you just can drop in your DVD, or you can install from the network or whatever. Um, we will see this a bit later on. Then text and graphical user interface mode. So before, on the Windows side, we had the graphical user interface. On the Unix side, we had the text mode, and nobody was able to switch. Now we have a in both, they do behave this absolutely the same way. And as before, unified Windows is equal to Unix, more or less, of course, as usual. But we try to, to keep the system the same as far as possible. So what are the ways to install uh, Tech Life? Well, the first you probably got, I don't know if you get, or uh, I don't know, the members of the CSTAC get the Tech Collection DVD. You just pop it into your DVD drive and start the installation program on Windows. It even should auto start, but I don't know about the tech collection. So this is the easiest way for now. If you don't, if you have a good internet connection, we can go to another. Um, one thing, please remember: um, if you install from DVD and want to use the Tech Life Manager, please update it first. It's written on the websites of the Tech Life. Uh, the problem is that what we ship, what we pressed on the DVD, of course, has bugs. I mean, every software has bugs, and, and there were some a bit more serious bugs. And well, it's not that it destroys your hard disk, but it can make your installation, it, it can make Tech Life itself unusable. Um, some things which, it's just, I also collected some things, there's no exec. Many Unix users just stumble across this problem because when you drop in your DVD and it's auto-mounted from some, from some, I don't know, how daemon or whatever, it often mounts the DVD with the no exec, so you cannot execute programs from the DVD. The problem is you need the programs on the DVD because there are the LZMA, the dec decompression, it's a binary, it's on the DVD, so if you have this, then installation won't work, so you have to mount it manually. We cannot circumvent this, but this is just the auto mounting. Okay, so this is the first, many people are doing this now and that's fine, and, and also if you don't care about the fanciest, newest, whatever thing, you're just fine as in the last 10 years, just install this and wait for the next year's edition. You will get the updates too, so that's fine. Okay, what is new, you can install from the network. We'll see this a bit later on. You just don't have to have the DVD, you don't have to download the DVD, you just take an installation package and, and start it and we'll just install from the nearest uh, comprehensive dev RV network mirror. Then what you can do, you can uh, just install from a local hard disk, from a mirror, that what I'm doing and what I will present here afterwards, I have some live stuff here to show. It's just, and what I have is just a sync, a copy of what is on, on, on my mirror next in my university. We have on the university, we have a Citan mirror and I just sync it on my laptop every other day or something. So it's nothing, you can, you can also, uh, um, if you somehow involved in development, you can install from the SVN checkout, so it's from the subversion checkout. And this is something quite new. You can install from another installation. If you have already done an installation, you can use the installation package and tell him, ah, well, install from my running Tech Life system. But this is only possible when you just, re well, within the last months have installed Tech Life because we had to add the schemes. But this is already, this is nice for just for copying stuff over. That's easy. So these are the ways, and yeah, 
that's quite a lot. OK, where to start? OK, the first thing is just go here. This is, uh, so to say, the place where we distribute our stuff. There are two installation uh, here, installation packages. The one is only for Unix systems. The other one is for all systems. The installed.zip, it's not, not, not only for, for Windows, it's also for all Unix. The point is the difference here, we just include Windows binaries for Perl and Windows binaries for Perl PK, and uh, yeah, we have just everything we need for Windows. So it's about three or four megabyte. Yeah, on Windows, you just double click on the, on the batch file and everything should go. You will get the graphical user interface. We will see this afterwards. On Unix, you start the shell script, uh, the Perl script, and add arguments. We will discuss this nowadays. So it's quite straightforward for, for everyone ever start something. So I already told you, you can, from where to you want to install, if you want to adjust it, you just give the location argument. That can be practically everything. I mean, in, in, practically. So what nowadays people use, it's normal pass, it's in your URL uh, system with file or some FTP or HTTP request. This is what we understand. It's in fact what wget understands, nothing more. I said we have a graphic user interface and a text user interface for the installation pro uh, for the installer. On Windows, by default, we have the graphical user interface. On Unix, by default, the text mode. But you can switch around. You just give minus GUI if you want on Unix the graphical user interface. And on Windows, you give just no GUI. You just then you go in text mode. So it's no problem to switch if you want. Also something we will see here, it's the graphical, not the text mode. The text mode is really simple. We want to keep it that. But the graphical is localized. We try to translate it in as many, well, not we. People are helping us in as many languages as possible. If you have a local system on your computer, it also tries to auto deduce. So if uh, on my window, as on the windows in my virtual box I'm running, you will see it will start in German because it's a German windows. But, and this is the current list of languages uh, we have, so please, if you want to add some, contact me. There are some more options I don't want to discuss here, might be of interest. Okay, installation setting. If you ever have installed Tech Life before, you will find that it's absolutely the same. It, does, it hasn't changed at all, maybe there's some graphical stuff, the underlying stuff. It also has changed because no shell script anymore. But in fact, it's just the same options and, and, and uh, things you have to choose as before. The first is on Unix, you can say what are architectures you want to install, what platforms. You see, this is the list we, we support at the moment, which is quite long. I mean, this is the real problem to get this all compiled because we need compiled binaries for all these platforms. This doesn't work, uh, just go back, this doesn't work on Windows. On Windows, we cannot install more than one architecture. It's uh, disabled because Windows doesn't support links, and we need links for, for Unix uh, binaries. So on Windows, if you want to have multi, then you have to install it on some. Then we have created some schemes. Schemes should just help people to select stuff they need. There's the full scheme that installs everything. There's the T-Tech scheme, which we try to keep as close as possible to the, the coverage T-Tech had before. There are some schemes made for uh, the Polish group, for, uh, for the Gutenberg, then one specially for uh, context. An absolute minimal scheme, which is there's just plain tech. I mean, if you want nothing more. There's medium, which is a good mixture between you, you get LaTeX, you get uh, the recommended packages and fonts, so it's a quite a good starting point because the full scheme is quite big already and the minimum is very small. So, but this is only a first selection. After this, you can see this just selects in the list of collections. These are all collections, what we have. The problem is, you know, you might ask why all these levels. The problem is we have about 2,000 packages. I mean, everything what is on CTAM. And 2,000 packages, we cannot give the user the option to select 2,000 packages. This doesn't work. I mean, especially because there are some dependencies. 
And so we put them into collection of things which somehow belong to each other. You see uh, HTML processing, humanities, packages for humanities. We have here packages for publishers and theses. So there are all the packages when you want to publish your PhD for whatever university. Piastric stuff, graphic stuff. So it's somehow ordered into topics. And then here you can select whatever you want. You can also add um, documentation and hyphenation patterns for, the diff for various languages. Here's the list of uh, well, language support hyphenation patterns. And in addition, we have documentation also only in this language if here can be selected. So these are the things you have to check. Well, the next step is, well, you have to say where to install. It's not very surprising. So what do you do? You have to give the tech here. This is the main directory. In fact, you don't, if you're just happy with the normal layout, you don't have to change anything because if you change it to something reasonable, then all the others are changed. And that's quite fine. So here, I, I, I made it here, my, the, the screenshots on my Linux desktop. I don't have to write permissions anywhere else. So I just chose my home directory to install and then. Yeah, some more things which need to be well, some options you have, you don't have to, it's just, you can select the paper size. If you have, well, normal by default, we ship A4. But, well, people from across the big pond want, probably want to have letters, so you can choose this here. There's another option, which is create all format files on installation. We, I really recommend to leave this on. Because it's, as, if it's your own computer and you're only one person, then it's fine. But as soon as you're working in a multi-user group, then it's really a bad thing when, you have, when, when, when everyone creates his own formats and not even knowing that he's creating. I'm, I had this problem. I just forget this once. And first, we had this. And our secretary just, well, compiled the LaTeX document. It was the first time she called LaTeX. So the format was created in her home directory. And then she realized that some hyphenation patterns were missing. Uh, well, we just added the hyphenation patterns, but still in her LaTeX it was not, of course, because her format dump was still the old one. So that's, uh, that's a real problem. So we leave this on. What you can turn on and off is whether you want to install the documentation for font packages and macro packages and the sources for font and macro packages. Why this? The, the documentation of font and macro packages is huge. I mean, this is more than 60 or 70 percent of the size. So if you want to cut on size, then, well, it's a problem. Then you don't have the documentation. So it's somehow a trade-off. What should you do? But if someone wants to have an absolutely minimal system, then he can select this. Nowadays, with hard disk drive, it's not so bad. OK, what has to be done after the installation, we will see this then, well, on we, or what is done or has to be done from the user. On Windows, you don't have to do anything, in fact. It's all done automatically. There will be a manual entry in the start, uh, one desktop link to a, to a program, and the path is changed. So from then on, you can just do whatever you want. On Unix, there's one option I didn't show. You can add system integration, then links into standard directories, or you just add this path, also this, the, the location of the binaries to the path and adjust similar demand path and info path if you want. That's all, nothing more is needed. Okay, um, there are other ways to run the installer. You can, if you just don't want to install it, put it onto your hard drive because you don't have enough it. You can run everything from the DVD. There is, you have to do this in text mode. There's a way to switch uh, between the two installation modes where everything is copied on the hard drive and everything is set up to run from the DVD. This is only supported in the text mode, unfortunately. Um, this is quite nice. It sets up your home directory in a way you need, and that's fine. There's a second way which Sieb uh, Kronenberg uh, created. This is a way of portable, we call it. It's quite nice. It has a minimum impact on your system. It doesn't copy anything. I mean, well, into your home directory, it has to copy some files because it generates the format files. But any, nothing else is copied. Nothing else is set up. This is quite nice. It start, starts a subshell or a command window in, in Windows 
where you can run your tech live and it's nice for USB stick, you just plug in the USB stick and let it run. That's a fine way. Okay, um, yeah, I want to give you some quick demo for the text mode and the graphic user interface mode if, if it's not too boring for you. Dun, dun, dun. No, wrong. So, uh, yeah. So, so what we, what I have here now is um, you see TLNet two thousand eight. This is this is what is on the comprehensive tech archive network today. It was a sync I did this morning um, from my university server. And well, if you want to just install on Windows, well, it's not really Windows. I mean, it's just yeah, just click this, yeah, you know, and whatever. And and that's it. Um, you see here, it's everything in German, so I just cancel and, and show you that you can um, just let's start it in, in, in English. Uh, uh, acht, the punkt bad minus minus lang n. So it's, I, I have, it just, you see, it auto-detects the language of the system, it also works. And here, now you can give the language. So I, I don't want to install this full scheme because it's just too much. Just let's install minimal scheme and add lately recommended packages. You also, it's not done here automatically, but if you add recommend latex packages, then also the basic latex package is added, so you don't have to care. You see already here, we always have the, the estimated size you will need, and when you switch off the, um, the documentation, then it's going from 240 to 128. So it's quite a lot of space saving if you want. Let's do this now because I want to have a quit. Yeah, anything else I think I leave like it is. Here you see the installation. This is quite new. It's not what was on the DVD. Uh, this, this is uh, something I programmed uh, just recently that there is a, a nice progress bar and, and that you see what's going on and how many. And there's also estimated time. This is the remaining time and the estimated time. Of course, I mean, time estimation is always a bit a problem. Um, yeah, we try to do our best. Um, you see the number of packages in total you, we have to install, the number of packages we have installed, the r estimated remaining time, the estimated total time, well, and some graphically that it looks nice. I mean, people somehow were, were asking for this, uh, so it be. Okay, well, it's quite, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't know. In, this, in the meantime, we can, we can go on to, oh, that's not good, to see the text mode. Uh, no. It's to see. So th this is the text mode now. This is always in English. We cannot change. Here you see uh, detected platform. Yeah, that's right. I have this platform. Here you can change the binary system. You just press the B button, the selection, and then it's same. Here it gives you a warning. Default location is not writable because, I mean, I'm just a normal user. I cannot write to this. So it gives you a warning. Well, here I cannot install. Please change it. And then here are the options. And this is the one I said which is only present when on the text mode set up for running from DVD. So let's say also the, the minimal scheme, then I change, so I press D for the directories. I see it's, let's put it in my, into my home directory. No, that's bad. You see all the, all the others automatically change if you put something with 2008 at the end. So we try to be a bit smart here. So that's fine. Yeah, options, 
whatever we can do this and then you just press install and the output here is practically it's, it's completely the same I mean it's, it's the same background I mean the graphical user interface is just front end for something and yeah that was quite fast it's much faster than on on, on Windows especially because it's a so that's all so on Windows how we are doing here Ah, yeah, it's finished here. It tells you how welcome and go to the website for upgrade for, for information, whatever. Please read it. And that's it. From now on, you have a running system. I just want to show you. Um, so is it called now? Ah, here we are. And well, whatever. So PDF latex, so what you, whatever insult, it's just ready for running. So you see, this is this is. So we'll come to this back later. Okay. Any questions for the installation stuff? Okay, because now I, I want to continue to to other things. Okay. No. Click, uh, the platform we have at the university yeah. and uh, they link, uh, No, you don't have to link it. Of course, I mean, on one computer you can only run one. But the point is you install it on a file server and select all the architectures you need. And then you export it, for example, with NFS to the different clients. And they have to set their pass environment so that, that it's running. Yes, so all, everything else is completely the same. Scripts uh, are all also in the... Uh, everything, everything is in the binary. It's only, you have only to adjust the path, nothing else. Yeah. The path setting for Unix and for Windows is the same. So this, I was doing this with TechLife 2005. It was always possible. Even the uh, sharing uh, between Windows and Unix? Yes. Yeah, you, you, the file server has to be Unix because you cannot install more platforms. But you can, there is one thing you have to do, there is a script in the install, is an option, that you set up the Windows environment, the path. In fact, you can do it by hand. I mean, you can, you can go into the registry in Windows and add the right path, and then it's, that it would be finished already. But they, we just help people, there is a script which you can run, and then it will set up the Windows environment as it was installed on the Windows. New binaries is a problem. This is something you mean when you, when we update something. Up to now, we didn't update any binaries. There is, this is because you see we have about eight or nine different platforms. This is something very hard. We want to keep it in sync, and getting everyone to recompile the whole of Tech Life. I mean, when I'm doing it on Alpha Linux, I have a very old Alpha server. It takes about six hours, and then often it breaks down out of some crazy things. So this is something. Um, I mean, building the binaries took us about five months or four until everything was settled. So this is something we, we will not do on a regular basis, but we are discussing how to deal with this, that also binaries, I mean, most binaries don't change, to be honest. The only binaries changing fast is Luatech at the moment. I mean, binaries. I mean, and there we are discussing, and I can present later on or discuss a bit different options where you can update your Lua tech from, from the context minimal. So there are some ideas to support this. Is there a plan to have uh, TechLib 2008 or uh, will there be only updates? No, 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 no. It will be TechLive 2009, there will be, because we have some things we cannot do by normal updates. So there will be chuck pop and you, can, you have to do a new reinstallation. We, we cannot recommend, we have some stuffs we want to do, which we are already collecting in our to-do list before 2009, tuk, 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 which we cannot do safely at the moment. This would be too dangerous. Um, of course, well, 
I don't know what we will do with 2008 then, but probably will be phased out. But during the year, package upgrades will, will continue for 2008 for some time. And uh, when uh, the test flight 2008 will be uh, lift back for Red Hat or...? <laughs> <laughs> for Red Hat, I don't know. For Debian, I've started work already. It's, it's, it's not so far, I mean, but... It's all also about time. I mean, uh, programming time to, to, to get it. I have it ready, and I think when DB and Lenny comes out, I hope that until that time I can upload the first packages for, for TechLife 2008, because now I don't upload, because TechLife 2008 will never ever come into Lenny, which will be released who knows when, but in the next, hopefully, some months. And so I have to wait anyway. And then I will 2008 will come into the other pack. I don't know what the others are doing at the moment. I heard uh, that some guy uh, from Red Hat uh, that actually has the headquarters now uh, did some script uh, for unpacking the. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I checked the script. Unfortunately, you will never be able to upload it this way because it doesn't create a source RPM. It just creates, it just takes the binaries. This is not the way Red Hat or Fedora will accept it. It's impossible. I mean, this, this is for a quick and dirty packaging. What I did in the beginning for Debian, this is fine when you want to have binary tables, but you have to recompile everything on the servers of, of, of Fedora. So I don't know. Okay. Take Life Manager, this is probably the biggest addition to, well, the biggest non-really tech-related. The Lua Tech is the, the big addition of, of, of new engines. Take Life Manager is for, well, what it is says, it's just for managing the Tech Life installation. Um, it is a huge program. It's, I don't know, it grew uh, with time and it's permanently growing. And... It, it, it's already, I don't know how many Perl lines. Um, what you can do with it, it's already a long list, but I think I, I, I even forget, forgot something. So, okay, the most important thing is if you didn't install everything or you have installed too much or whatever, you can install and remove packages from your installation, single ones. That's easy. Most important, many people have asked for this for years, you can update packages from our net uh, web distribution. Something which is re quite recent, we added in two years ago, I don't know who suggested it, that you can make backups of single packages. You can also combine this, that when you do an update, for every package which is updated, a backup is made, and you can go back to this old backup. Why? I mean, if you are just in a production environment and you just upgrade whatever package and suddenly, your well, your documents don't compile anymore because they change something, which often happens, I mean, often, but, well. Um, then you can go back, I mean, this is something. Right? Then paper configuration like tech config. Tech config is something we, uh, everyone from Unix knows, but it was never available on Windows, so we, have to, we, we just tried first to rewrite the tech config script in tech Lua. Now we are doing everything in Perl in the tech life manager, but it's now on Windows and Unix the same again. You can set the paper. Then you can add and remove binaries later on. So if you just add a new computer to your department and this one has some whatever strange architecture and, and we support it, then you can add it. You can search whatever is installed, what is available, you can search in the description, which is quite handy at time. You can list and search in the packages. You can set some default values. We will talk about this at the end. And then the usual stuff, which most people, well, no, it's not usual stuff. This is something coming from the Debian side, which is necessary with these updates, is that you can recreate these cent three central configuration files. I mean, this is now, I don't talk, it's about for users, I say at the beginning, so I won't need to go into details here. Okay. What is the general syntax? It's, uh, sorry, I'm a mathematician, so, and I like to have clean and layout. I'm a permanent discussion with Carl Berry. He wants to, that we can arbitrarily shift things around. Okay, it's just to have the Tech Life Manager. This is now the text version. Later on, we will see there's a graphical version. The text version 
works the same way as I said before on Windows and Unix. Well, you have some options on a global level, options which apply to the whole of Tech Life Manager. Then you have some action, whatever to be done, and then some options for this action, and then some arguments. So that might sound a bit uh, tricky, so let's go through the whole bunch one by one. So what are these global options? Well, you can give the installation location. The default is saved in the database. You don't have to give it, but if you want to give it if you install from somewhere else, you can tell him, please give me the graphical user interface. And as with the installation, the graphical user interface try to deduce the right language, but you can also choose it. And then there are some default options for debugging, double as a V. It just gives you more and more uh, verbosity with debug statements and some more. Okay, what are the actions? There are quite a lot. Um, general actions, as I call them, is just searching for files, for package names, for description. Show, just give me information. What, what the hell is this package? Then list, list everything what is installed, not. Uninstall, which just removes the whole of tech life. Why not? Check, does some checks on the database and that not, that, that, that you not accidentally have, delete, have deleted some files or, or some, well, it just checks some. We use it generally to keep our subversion repository checked and everything consistent, but it can be used for people. Then graphical user interface. Yeah, you, you've seen there was a minus uh, dash uh, GUI. You can also call it as action. It's the same version help. Configuration options, yeah, it's just option. We will see this later. You can set up your system to configure your tech life. You can set up the paper for different programs. You can generate these three configuration files and you can uninstall it the same. Package management action, actions mm, for most people, the, the most important stuff, you can install, update, remove, backup, restore. These are the things you normally want to do. I, I guess most people only use update anyway and nothing else. Um, so that's fine. So one option, the search, search and show, I, I will show you then. It searches locally installed packages. So you have what you have on your computer and searches these packages for, well, whatever you write at the end. There are some options to adjust this. You can tell him global, please not search not only what I have installed already, but search also what is, what is available, what is available on the server. This needs network access, of course. It connects to the server and downloads. And you can search for file names. Here, normally, you search for the description. What we search here is the title and the description of the packages, and, but you can search for file names. Um, Um, so you see what I have to uh, no, what I have to do is, is this is everything is setting up the pass environment. That's what we installed before, and then let's say it search par shape, uh, no paragraph. No, well it gives me nothing. I didn't have any st st thing installed which mentions paragraph. So, but I need something. Yeah, let's say well. Search globally and tells me, ah, yeah, oops, that's too big. Well, anyway, you, you see, it tells me at the beginning here, uh, well, it's from where it's using, and then it's everything which it finds. Paragraph, you m might notice here, the word paragraph doesn't appear here, but there's a long description. And let's say, whatever, latrine. Um, maybe I want to have this here. And then gives me a lot of installation. It's a, the package is called Latrine. It's a package. It's the short description is to typeset dropped capitals. Here's a long, the Latrine blah, 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 you see. It tells me now it's not installed. And it tells me, hey, guy, if you want to install it, you can install the one package. Or you install this collection. It's contained in the collection. And yeah, this is 
quite ca comes in quite handy at times when you when you want to search some specific package. Okay, that's for search and show. Um, oh yeah, that's already forgotten. Okay, then the install option is not very surprising. I mean, it just installs the package or the collection you asked for. Mind, um, if, you, if you forget this lower part, if you just want to install a collection, it installs all the packages in the collection. So it always tries to install all necessary dependencies. So we try to keep stuff, uh, well, somehow useful in the sense that we are installing all dependencies. If you don't want this, if you don't want, if you want to install one package only without the depending one, then you can give this argument. And then there's one more, forget it, okay? If you want to know what it is, then just ask me in private, but it's, it's not a good idea to even ever think about using this one. Um, ah, yeah, wait, let's see. So it, before it told me, oops, it was it? It told me I need this here, so let's install Latte Extra. And then you see, oh, wow, of course, it's installing not only this one, but all the, of the collection in, in, in Latte Extra. Yeah, you see, I mean, just wanted to show you. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, then, oops, that was too far. Update here. Okay, um, update, this is the one thing most people are using nowadays. It's the, the most important program for uh, the normal user currently. So it just updates what is there. Options, please use first the list. It tells you which packages are updated, what to do, um, yeah. Then minus all just tells you, yeah, well, just tells Tech Life Manager, please update everything possible. Most people just in the morning type Tech Life Manager update minus all and then they're happy they have the nice one. You can add minus dry run, which just does everything like real installation update, but doesn't change anything. So if it's, it's a bit different than list, but not. Back up there, if you give this option, then for every package, which gets updated, a backup will be made. So, I mean, if you update the whole of Tech Life, you will have a huge backup because we have already updates for many, many packages. So, but people, well, sometimes want to do this. It's not automatic. It's, well, in fact, with the Tech Life Manager, you are getting from today on, or no, since two weeks, you can set up in some way that also automatic backups are made. But um, this is really new. And as before, okay, the update action, can I show? Yeah, I can show you. Because ah, it's still installing here. So. So what is the typical output? Here you see, I did what, what here is the um, T2008-new, that's, that's a copy of the one what is considered, and, and I just played around in the Tech Life database so that there's something to see, that there's something to update. So it would tell me, it will remove this package. I mean, this is only a fake example, yeah? Why? Because we removed it on our server. It was the, the reason behind this is we remove uh, commercial no sale licenses on a daily basis, and we well when we find it, but it happens unfortunately quite often, and we remove it on the server, and we want to keep the, the Tech Life installations in sync, so we we remove packages which have been removed also on the server, but. Stay calm, this is very conservative. If you package in some way, there are some ways, your own packages for your own department. You can make your own packages for your own department. <laughs> they will never be removed, so it is quite conservative. And you can prohibit this. You can say, don't remove anything. And then it tells you, well, fancy ref should get an update and microtype should get an update. So this is the, the list option. I don't do the, the, the update now because I want to show it in the graphical. Interface then. 
Okay, that's the update many people are using. There's one thing when you, in, as I said in the beginning, when you install from DVD, please first update BIN Tech Life and Tech Life Infra. You don't have to remember this is, is explained on the websites Tech Life, uh, on the TAC website. Please do this before doing the rest of the update. Okay, there's a graphical user interface for the, um, for the Tech Life Manager. Um, yeah, it looks like this. I will show it also in live. What do you want, Windows or Linux? Oh, well, let's do it on Windows. Yeah, switch. So then you see also because on, 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 on Unix you just so, take Live Manager. It loads the, okay, here it is. Okay, at first, uh, it's, oh, yeah, okay, it's Germany, whatever. It, it checks here. Okay, it tells me, okay, uh, well, it's, it's, I haven't loaded the remote database, so there's no packages to install, of course, because, well, I didn't load the, and, but I can still, this is packages locally installed. You can click on a package and it gives you the description. You can search for whatever. Uh, shape I didn't even install. Okay, and, yeah, then here are configuration options. So this is what you can set. This is the default in installation. No, I switched to English, sorry. This is, this is bad. Mm. Yeah, that's better. So. So the configuration, just a, okay, the default installation source, this is where it's looking at. This is the way from where you installed it. So in the beginning, it will, if you install from DVD, it will stay DVD, and you su should switch it to this, uh, to the Tech Life uh, CTAN mirror. This is, but it's easy. Then are the options you remember from, from the installation. That's are the options I checked while installing, but you can change it afterwards. It will not, install the documentation of packages you had before, but if you update a package or reinstall a package, then the documentation files will be added. Here are changing of paper size for various programs. If context is installed, it will show up here also. And then, well, make tech LSR, these are the stuff. So, for example, if you want to change, let's say, DVI PDFM paper, then you just, these are the supported and then also the formats are created. Yeah, this is what you can do. And as I said, if I load the remote database, so, so from the server, so to say, then I have the option to install packages. And you see here with an I, everything what is installed, and I can install whatever, install selected, and then, yeah. You will see here the output window gives what has happened before. And you can go on to updates and see here what I've seen, what you have seen before when you call it on the command line, it's also here, these two packages and you just say update all. And then these two packages will be updated and the other one will be removed. This is not shown. Okay. And then after this, there is no package to update anymore. So this is the Tech Life Manager, the graphical interface. Um, yeah, I'm, okay. Okay, some concluding remarks for the Tech Life Manager stuff. It is very much work in progress. I mean, it's working quite well now already. I mean, we, we, what we shipped on the DVD had some problems, but now it's, it's much better. And it works with, Carl did an incredible work to adjust it. That, that, well, my assumption was that on all systems we have GNU tar. And that, that wasn't true because on the BSDs you have some strange tar and then, then many things didn't work. So, but it is very much still work in progress. We have just in the last days, in the last weeks, I have done some integration of the graphical user face into the Tech Life Manager. Currently the graphical user interface is just the front end and calls the Tech Life Manager the text mode. 
and this will be integrated, which gives nicer output and more helpful. Then, um, well, the graphical user interface needs still some work because not every pro everything you can do with the text mode is exhibited in the graphical user interface. You cannot say make a backup, you cannot, there are many things you, you just cannot do with the graphical user interface. And yeah, for this, I just say, well, if there's some Perl programmer, <laughs> please join us. There's one more thing which is quite new and helpful. What happens if the Tech Life Manager, you just deleted a Perl model, you just, uh, whatever, Windows just deleted your Perl, Tech Life Manager Perl code or whatever, or something else strange happened, or we shipped a completely stupidity, what can happen. Yeah? I mean, in some ways you have to recover, and we have two ways now. For Windows, we have on, also on the server, on the same place, we have an executable program which doesn't need anything else, which just checks whether tech is somewhere in the past, the tech life manager or the tech, and checks and says, okay, I found here a tech life installation. Is it the right one? If you say yes, then it just installs a consistent version of the whole Perl files of the of the tech life manager of everything you need so that you can get running again, you know, that's working again. So this is the one. The same thing is available for, for Unix system, which is, a, you, you know, maybe from, from some other programs. It's a self-extracting tar archive, so it doesn't need any Perl code. It ships also all the files. So we try to help people, if there's a problem, just get one of these. It's also the best way if you are, um, if you update from the DVD, it's the fastest and safest way to just, before you do any update, get one of these two files, run it once, and uh, then you can work to anything. Then it, it will update Tech Life Manager to the latest versions, and then you can do anything else. So this is a very nice thing. Okay, any questions to the Tech Life Manager? Tech Life usage, uh, whatever, now, because I want, his, his next step comes a bit, uh, as I say, ah, oh, no, 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 sorry, forgot that. To the tech, well, just finish this, but some other user visible news we have, which might be interesting. We switched our complete hyphenation pattern system, and that was really a last minute change, and it's really thanks to Peter, uh, Arthur, and, and Moetza. They did a huge, incredible work. They converted all hyphenation patterns to UTF-8, most, not, well, all, and we, we just switched over the system, which is nice. Why? All the engines we have now share the same. If you install, you remember, some language support, these hyphenations pattern will be available in all, lang in all, pat as in all engines. It will be, a, before it was not possible because um, the traditional PDF tag and plain tag or whatever expected uh, in some, well, the hyphenation pattern we are in some, sometimes in arbitrary or in some specific encodings, while Xitech and Luetech expected UTF-8 patterns, so you couldn't load the one into the other. And this is now changed. They have all, we have PDF tech or E-Tech based. This, this E-Tech has something which is, uh, where you can also define languages. They are all completely coherent, same, same support. Whatever you install for all formats you have. Then we have Lua Tech, it's, well, this is the big new engine, probably, I mean, Hans Hagen was here, so he, he was talking about, I don't have to, say, I, I cannot add anything what he said before. What is new, something which took us quite some while is Xindi, it's a very nice uh, index, uh, indexing program, very powerful. Um, for, win, for Windows systems, we have hidden copies of Perl and GhostScript, why? We want to have everything working out of the box. We need the Perl anyway, the Perl we need anyway for, for, for all our scripts, but the Go script we need for many, many scripts of PS to PDF or we need a Go script. None of these two Perl or Go script will ever interfere with other Perl installation or Go script installation. They are really hidden. There are no environment variables, nothing set, so you don't have to care. It's really minimal, stripped down to what we actually need. Yeah, font config, because we have Xidech uh, now, we have also font config library support. This is 
What is new is something I will show you then is PS view. It's a very nice PostScript and PDF viewer. It was written by a Polish guy as well. And it's extremely fast, nice, and I can show you here. This is really, oops. Mm. See, okay, well, you, it's, or, or again, you, you can, right options. I don't know. I don't know what, where, where to change the language. The, the point is, the one thing of this is, I mean, you can PostScript and PDF, and because there is hardly any free PostScript viewer, so here you have one. Uh, it has, you can, this is nice if you want, um, if you want to, to check the layout, you can add arbitrary uh, grids on your, of arbitrary size and, and units. And no idea how to clear grids. And then something which practically no PostScript viewer can nowadays, you can zoom whatever you want. You know, it, it, because it, it uses PostScript, it is Lua code post, uh, postscript, and you can zoom in if you want to examine single letters. Then, uh, no, uh, then you can whatever you want. You know, as a, this is, you can if you want to just test test your fonts. You can do it here. You know, this is it's uh, this is an. an Enlargement factor of 1,300. Every, every other program tries to render the full page at the 1,300 resolution and just breaks down because it doesn't have no, not enough memory. And it's the only one you can do. It's, it's really nice. Um. Yeah, and then, well, this is not completely new. You know, this is the DVR out is also present again in, in Windows is the uh, DVI previewer of, of the. Okay. For me, this is the user specific part. The second part will be a bit more technical. Um, I still have half an hour, so that's fine. Um, so if you have any questions before, Teasing away, uh, users just tell it, ask me now. Yeah? To what? Uh, not surprising, I'm a Debian developer. <laughs> yes, you are right. Of course, I mean, if you take a look, if, if you just stay awake afterwards, you will see that even the Tech Life database is very similar to the package description files we have in, in Debian. Yes, of course. I mean, I don't reinvent the wheel. And in fact, I have the idea to rewrite aptitude or, or, or apt or whatever and use aptitude for tech life. But I cannot program it because I'm not good enough programmer to actually do this. But that would be a nice project. I mean, then you could have pff, hundreds of other things. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is one of my ideas for a Google or Summer of Code project. I mean, there must be really good people because it's, it's not easy way. I mean, but, but this is something, and it's for sure not for 2008 and for sure not. But this is an idea. If one can screw up aptitude to, to work with this stuff because some things, of course, are special. But that would be nice. Okay? So... A short intermezzo. So it's fact. It's not only for package writers. It's for everyone here to get an idea how complicated stuff is that it comes into Tech Life. So until users see it, so getting things into Tech Life looks okay. There's a new package or a new version. It's just uploaded to the Comprehensive Tech Archive, like one of the nodes. We normally get an email. There's a new package. I mean, it's not only us. There's many people getting this. It's just from the list. And we also have a check script. So what's going on then? We have a script. This is called CTAN to TDS, Tech Directory Standard, which is, has grown over years. The problem is on, on the CTAN mirrors, packages are appearing in arbitrary forms. You know, some packages just small, have everything in one directory. Some have already Tech Directory stack. So some you have to unpack. Some packages you have to run the, the install files. 
So, but we are adding this page. So this script just takes a CTAM package and tries to whoop, uh, chuggle it around until it's in a tech directory standard so we can put it into tech life. So if it is known already, then we are happy. Then we just run it. This is, this is the nice fall. So if it's just an update of a package on CTAM and they didn't change the layout, it is for us a, a work of about 20 seconds to put it into tech life. You know. So if, it, if not, then, well, then we, we have to hack around in CTAM to, to this script. And well, this normally takes a bit longer, especially when, when package authors make it more and more complicated. I mean, nice example is comma script at the moment. Um, <laughs> I don't discuss it any longer. So, okay, after this we have, we can call the script and the stuff, the package is just arrives in our subversion repository. This is, this is on the TAC server, is this. Okay, after here, in the night, during the night, normally at three o'clock in the morning, some, there are thousands of scripts around which generate the database. And then a reference checkout is made. So it's never made directly from the server, it's from a reference checkout. From this reference checkout, we update the TechLife net distribution and make a test installation. This is automat automatic. Before we ship something to the CETA node, we make a tech installation to check that it's, that it's not completely broken. I mean, we cannot capture every error, but we try. Before we ship something broken, we, we have automatic testing here. And when this check succeeds, then it goes, it is mirrored to the, to the Cambridge node of, of the CTAN network. And after this, well, you know, some mirrors are faster, some are slower. Normally within one or two days, it arrives in your local mirror. And after this, with Tech Life Manager, it arrives in the user computer. So this is quite a long way. And it shows if, you, if there's a new version, it takes up to two to three days that people are getting it. I mean, we have it much faster, but until it is everywhere, it takes some time. It's much faster already. And also, if there's a bug and we have a problem, even if I fix it immediately, it still takes some time until it comes to the user, so that you have a bit of an idea what, what uh, things we have to do. Okay, technical part now, it's, well, technical, but it's not so technical, but a bit more. Background of this whole was a rewrite of the infrastructure. We had, before we had something what we call tech life packages, TPMs that were XML files. It was horrible hard to parse because you cannot expect an old system to have an XML parsing library. And it is nice to use XML for things where you know you have to extend it to whatever, but it's incredibly hard to work with. And so we had some aims to, to before rewriting this infrastructure. And the one was these TPMs had also a complete mixture of static stuff in there and generated the file lists. And we wanted to separate this because you always get out of sync. So we wanted to separate it into source, where it's only the really necessary stuff, and then we generate stuff which is enriched. We will see this later on. No additional files should be kept in sync. If you remember on the old, the installation worked not with the TPM files because the shell script we used could not pass the TPM files. We had to create list files, and these list files were loaded. In from, and this created a lot of problems. So we wanted because they were out of sync. So we want to have one sync and should be easy passable and, and yeah. Well, single updates over the net, that was also the, the idea of to rewriting this infrastructure, of course, and then better documentation. The problem with the TPMs that was, I mean, when I started programming, packaging tech life for Debian, uh, it was trial and error to get this, this XML parsing right. And because there was no real disc explanation of the models for Brees, did an incredible work. He had written a TPM factory, loads of Perl code, but it was nothing documented. So it was hard to guess what the stuff is doing, unfortunately. So what now we have, there's one file, it's a, called Tech Life TLPD, Tech Life Package Database. And it de describes everything. It, it is used to describe what you have installed, and it's the same file is used to describe our subversion repository, and it's the same file is used to describe the Tech Life network, these net packages. So it's always the same. It's a simple text file. 
it's, <laughs> it's UTF-8, yeah, because we take code from what we produce is just ASCII, but we take the, from the catalog, so it, a catalog contains UTF-8. But it's a single text file line-based, very simple. We have a revision number for single pack. Every package has a revision number. And this revision number is not the version. It's, it's, it's what we have, the highest number of revision in the repository. We will discuss this. We have generated static contract from the rest. We have, it is, the Tech Life database is regenerated every morning and from absolutely minimal files. So, yeah, and then it is enriched with data from the Tech Catalog, the title and the description we have seen before. There's just stuff from the Tech Catalog. We don't write anything ourselves. I mean, no description. Package autos, uploading stuff, please add your description. It will end up here. Uh, and it is documented in complete detail. We have the pod plain old documentation, Perl. It's, every detail is documented. So how does it look like? It's really, as I said, it's a bit more technical, you know. It's just a list. I mean, what you said before, if you have ever looked into a package file of Debian, then you know. It's just, well, for every package you have, it starts with name. It tells me the name of the package and then, well, the name of the package. And then some other things. And then there's an empty line or the more empty lines and then comes the next package. So it's a sequence of key value pairs. It's always key value, key value. Packages belonging together are separate by an empty line. So if you have an empty line, then a new package starts. It's one group per package, yeah? And we have some meta packages for our configuration we will see later on. So how does one of these packages look like? Well, it's name. The, this thing just gives you where a space is. So the name, it's a zero poster. I took it, I don't know why. It tells you the category, the revision, the short and the long description. Here the long description, this, all the lines are added up. Then some documentation files. It gives you also the size on the disk, the file name of the documentation, and also some text details and language. We want to use this to rewrite tech doc DK, you know, this interface to the documentation. All the information is here. It's someone, it's, there's only someone needed to, it's parsing is easy. There are Perl functions to parse it, to show, to present this in a way. It's here, all here, the information. For every doc file is written, run files. And then we have additional stuff which we just take from the catalog, every information. It's just the catalog tells us it is version 1.22B. The last version update was in 2006. And the location on the CETA node is here and the license information. So we, we try to put everything in. Now you might ask, why don't we use this one here as revision number? The problem is this is not always present. It is not always guaranteed to increase. Package autos just shift with the versions. It's, it's nothing we can guarantee. And if we want to have updates, we have to have strictly increasing stuff. So, so this is how it does appear in the Tech Life database. No, but what's the question? How all this is generated from a very simple file from this one here. We just say we call it a zero poster and it's, we have to tell it what category, what type of package it is. Everything else is auto-generated. We don't want to, to keep, uh, the, the reason is, I mean, it's just, we are, in fact, only Carl and me doing all this work currently. Most programming on this level is only done by Carl and me. And if, we, if something is not going automatic, then it is not going nicely. It's a problem. So we have a minimal input with, uh, file with static data. The rest is generated from the subversion repository and enriched with the, from the catalog. And we have, as I said already, tagged documentation files. It's also when you upload the package to the C tunnel network, you can say this is a documentation file, this, this, this. And you can, for every documentation file, you can give a short description and a language tag. And we just take this one from the catalog here. And we hope that at some point in future, someone, and hopefully not me, will rewrite some this tech doc TK, which we have, which is unfortunately never, well, it has to, the database is hand maintained and we want to have something which is automatic. Another object, this is an example from the is bin bip tech, for example. It's a core package. You see a doc files run for, and here you see something new. 
In fact, we have for one package, we have not only one here occurrence, but we add packages by adding dot and then the, the architecture, the platform. Why? Because you want to selectively install binaries. You don't want to have always all the binaries or all platforms. So we, these are separated. So for Alpha Linux, you have to install this one. For uh, W, for Win32, you have to install this one. The source of this is a bit more complicated. Yeah, we cannot. We have, we have some pattern language. So you, you give for, a, please include in the run file section all files under this location. For the documentation, include all the files here. And for the binaries, include all these files here. So pattern language, this is one of the central pieces. We have in the source files, we have some pattern language for capturing files. And at expansion time, these are checked. And we have to tr some tricks to capture binaries. We will see this later. And we have separate objects for binary packages because we want to install them independently. So what is this pattern language? It's, this is already outdated because yesterday I implemented a new pattern type. But it's not complete. It's not outdated. It's not complete. OK, you just give pattern just has a, have a type and then the pattern, whatever. The prefix can be plus these three things. What is this magic thing? Oh, let's go back. Um, now nah, let's forget this. It's just, this is, inf well, this is the negation. So exclude files from here. And this is something which has to do with auto-generate. So what are, well, the pattern type F for file, then you just give a pass. And the last component can have the, the typical glob style as uh, question mark and star asterisk. So, but no other components. So this is a very simple way to add files. Then you have D pass and just include every file and every directory below this pass D. Then we have this complicated. Let's forget it for now. It's complicated, but we need it for some. And you just the worst case because it takes a lot of computing power because you have to check about 40,000 files again against an regex, and this costs horrible time. So we, we actually don't use this pattern currently. Also it's, I mean, it's here, but we don't, it's just, you can give an arbitrary regex. So some example, run pattern, just for run files, add techmf, check tech star, just adds every file here in this directory. Quite straightforward. Bin pattern, fbin dollar pip tech, includes the pip tech binaries into the bin pip tech package. We will see specialities here. The arch is what we need. Run pattern directory. This is, for example, for Lambda. For Lambda, please include everything under this tree into the package Lambda. I mean, it's taken from the Lambda package. Just D has directory, means directory. So everything below this path, just put every file in there. Other, it's just this uh, T pattern. It's actually only needed for Omega, for nothing else. And just an arbitrary rec apps. OK. Um, the point is why our, our source files are so minimal is that we auto-generate patterns. Some patterns are automatically generated. Why? Because this is because we package our package. Uh, well, we put the files in this way. It's just for, for every, if you have a package named A0 poster, then add all files belonging to techmfdist, then let's say fonts, IFM, blah, blah, blah. And at the last directory level is the package name. So if you look into the tech directory, tech directory structure, you see we have all our packages have as the last directory component the package name. And this is, so this is, this is the package name. And top tier is either EFM, uh, fonts, fonts, tech, uh, DVIPS. So in all these trees, we can just collect all files which belong to a pass where the last pass component is, is the name of the package. This coops up all and makes it, makes it quite, we will see. There are some more auto patterns we are, we are generating. Um, 
We have some additional tricks that um, we put this, this string here literally. I mean, the, 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 the trick is that we evaluate it in Perl code into the pin pattern, and we don't have to write separate pin patterns for every, for every architecture platform. It's just automatically. And for, for Windows systems, we not only add, if you just write this here, we add dot bat dot dll dot exe because many packages, many programs ship dlls and uh, also link libraries and also take lua. So what is all these tricks? What's the, what's the usage of all these tricks? We have of this auto. We have totally at the moment, I think that was yesterday, 1,719 source files, packages, and only 157 of them have patterns in there. All the rest is auto-generated. And of these 157, bin and hyphen, they are special because they are binary files, they are hyphens which are not somehow packaged. These are somehow special packages, are 80. So from normal package, we have only 77 packages which need special treatment. I mean, this is much better, 77 than 1,700. And this helps a lot to keep this. Okay, for our TLP object, we have what, so the source is very minimal for the, for the object occurring in the database. What are the allowed, I said you have key value, key value. What are the allowed keys? Okay, name, category, short and long description. This is taken from the catalog. Dependencies, we can here put not only one, but many times depend, which means this package depends on some other package. The idea is to add dependencies if we see this package needs some other. Execute, this is something we have to do after the installation of the package. Some things have to be done always. Post-installation action. What is it? If you install a font package, you want the map file to activate it because you want to actually use the fonts. If it's an outline font, the type 1 font, you actually want to DVIPS or the PDF tech to know about this font. You just don't want to have it only on the disk. You want to have it to know. For if you install new hyphenation patterns, you want to actually have the formats recreated that you have the patterns available. And if you install new formats, then it should be also available. So these are the post-installation actions. Then four types of list of files. So we have run files, stock files, source files, and bin files. These are the same as the patterns. So run files are the files you actually need. This corresponds to the tich directory structure. Doc files are all files under doc in the techmf structure. Source are under source and binary files are, well, this, are this in the binary tree. Every of these sections have um, attribute of the size that you know how big that's. You have seen at the installation program, it tells you how big the installation, how much space you need. Revision, I told you already, we take the SV, uh, the subversion revision because we need a strictly increasing uh, Revision number, some version, it must be strictly increasing. We cannot guarantee that the actual package version, the version the package auto is giving, is, is always present. We cannot guarantee that it's always present and strictly increasing. So we use our revision number, and that turns out quite nice. And then, as I said, we have some arbitrary catalog. This is what the additional information we pull in from the catalog. Yeah, we have a Perl programming API which is completely documented. So the, let's start with this here. Is the, for for in users in the sense who want to integrate it or write some front ends, this is the mo these two are the most important. The TLPDB is just the access to the, and TLP object gives you, um, so to say, a single package. TLP object represents one single object. It tells you which files, the revision number, you can ask, you can make packages from it, whatever. You and here is this post, this is in fact wrong, it's already called TL post actions. And uh, this is used for, for, well, the actions which have to be executed. There is some work to be done here in this area, but yeah, we will see. This is the Perl program. This is for people integrators. We have many more modules here. For us, we have Tech Life Tree, which is more or less a representation of the subversion output because we have to, we have, I've written a module that just, it's not really an access model to the Tech Catalog. It just scoops up the Tech Catalog database in, in some way and presents it in Perl because I need it there. TLP source files is very, this is the way to, well, 
to generate the database. We, we have additional utilities. This is, in fact, should be on the first, on the previous slide, because it's general utilities necessary, well, from setting up the programs to, to well, everyday stuff we need, until media somehow abstracts from the installation media, from DVD network, whatever. Uh, this is done here. Okay, then, well, there is something, <laughs> again, I'm discussing always with Carl, is other APIs, do we want them, do we, we planned or wished? I, I still think it would be nice to have a Tech Lua interface to, and actually, well, some library written in Tech Lua to, to interface to query, read and write the database, because then you can, currently everything what has to be programmed has actually to be programmed in Perl because to access the whole data has to be in Perl. I mean, there is a bit of Tech Lua code to, to read. I have written, in fact, it's an easy Tech Lua who read, it, this code reads the whole database and presents it uh, as a structure in, in, in Lua, but there's no support for writing or whatever. It would be nice. Python, there is some Python code from Jim Hefferon from the CETA network uh, because he needs it. C, uh, Jiu Chang had, has programmed some uh, C, why C interface would be nice. To, I mean, of course, uh, graphical user interface programming is for many people more convenient in, in C than in Perl TK. Bash, I have written years ago, no, not years, some time ago. The question is, is it useful? Ch Carl just uh, suggested that one could, I, I don't know, <laughs> he said it is possible that one could actually use the Perl code in C program, so to, to interface uh, C code with Perl code. No idea. This is something one should think about. Okay, uh, documentation, we have, as I said before, the whole, every module is completely documented. Every script we are writing for maintaining is also documented. The reason is also, uh, otherwise I forget myself what I have done and, and how, it's, how it's working. So there's everything, it's sometimes, it looks like there's too much of documentation into these pod files in these modules, but it just keeps accumulating that one knows how everything is working. There's an API document, uh, which in fact is a bit outdated. There are two articles in the Ars Technica, which has described uh, this also in details, what you have shown here quite short, and this is also published in the maps, as far as I remember, and then in the proceedings of the Bachotech, there is also, should be an article of mine, but it's, I, I don't know, it should be out already, but I don't know. Yeah, um, no, it's getting more. Some before, before closing, I have two more minutes, some, we have some special packages. This is now really for people who are, who want to, to work with this. There are some packages we use for configuration. We somehow, we want to save everything in the database. We don't want to abuse the registry or temporary files. And we call them all 00 tech life because no package will ever be called on CTAN will ever call 00 tech life, at least I hope. And there are three of them. This is 00 tech life config, installation config, and core. Um, the values stored in these packages we will see are just depend something. Depend is just has been chosen for whatever reason. I mean, because it was the most simple. And what follows after the deepend is somehow an option. Um, and all package, what is the, the zero zero tech life, this uniform prefix, uh, for the code is written that n it's never include, it's never, pa containers are never built, it's never split into source packages. All our code knows that everything which is starting with zero zero tech life is somehow special. Okay, there are zero zero tech life config. This is what we use, what we have in our database. It just configures how we create the tech life network distribution. Should we split the source and the documentation files? Because only when you split them, then you can select that uh, please install, do not install the documentation files or do not install the source files. If they are not split, then you cannot do this, but you can, we can adjust it. The container format, we have currently only one format. This is LSAT-MEA, this is a tar and then LZMA compressed. This is the biggest compression we have at the moment. ZIP can be supported. I had in, in the beginning, I had ZIP support, but then it turned out to, to, to parallel this, is, it's too complicated. 
the release, we just put in also the current release, so that, yeah. These are what we have here. Tech Life installation, if you ever open your Tech Life database, it's just a text file, you will find this at the top of your database. This is somehow the way your installation is managed. This is where you save when you change the paper, when you say change an option, it's written there. Um, it looks like this, that, that's actually from my, from my computer here. It's just, forget it, platform. This tells me, okay, I'm running, I was installed, and the main installation is running on this architecture. Why? This is some you never can remove. You see here, available architecture. So what is installed yeah, are binaries for Windows and for, for my Linux. And I can remove the Windows part, but I can never remove this part because this is, I mean, this, uh, the program itself. So this is prohibited. Then the default installation source. So by default installation, then here the option to create paper, create formats, create swim links. Uh, this is from the installation. And installation source and doc files. There are some more already about this automatic backup, and re uh, backup system. But this is, well, this is not uh, shipped. Yeah, since two weeks now. And then there's another package we just use for accumulating files we don't want to have to internal checks. This is something which is not so important. Resources for you if you want to, if, if you want to take a look at this. Of course, first, the, the, our mailing list. This is the main contact point. It's also for complaints, for suggestions, for wish lists, for whatever. Also for uh, giving thanks to the people who work there. Then there's the website, which is really good because there is also the link to the documentation of the Tech Life Manager, the documentation on how to update when you update the first time. It's everything here. Here we have the, our subversion repository. It's everything open. We can, you can take a look at everything. This is a web view and subversion access. You are, everyone has anonymous access. So you can download the whole stuff. You can follow. There's also the documentation of all the articles, all the presentations here. It's all the source code is checked in. So if someone wants to use it in presentation here, I'm happy. I mean, I, I don't care for, for, for people taking this code. And then there's a document on describing how to get stuff from the CETA network into Tech Life. If you remember in the middle, this, this diagram uh, is explained here. So to finish, I'm a bit over time. Um, I want to thank some people. Carl was, I mean, he had from the beginning really great enthusiasm to rewrite this. And, and he always supported me in, in this stuff and, and with helpful comment. I mean, he's really a good software designer. I mean, I'm just, a, I have no idea from programming. I'm just programming for fun. And so, and critical voices. So it's nice from him always to, to stop me and to, to give good suggestions. This is really good. I want to thank the tech user group who, give me, who gave me financial support when my last laptop broke. This is completely new because I mean I have done a lot of work on my last laptop and then it just recently broke completely. So they gave me support. The parts of the laptop were paid from the tech user group very much. And then, of course, thanks for your attention. I know it was quite long now and I hope you're getting too much bored. And yeah. So I'm finished, thanks, and I'm open for questions, remarks, suggestions, whatever. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, um, you mean you make an installation, make the update, and then and copy this? Yes. Um, as long as you're on Unix system, you just copy over the files. <laughs> That's the easiest way. <laughs> and you just, any, you have to don't do anything else. And you can, as I said before, if you have, if the installation was quite recent, you can tell the, um, the update program to update also from this installation. That's, that will work also, so that you can use an installation as installation source for a different one, as also as an update source for the Tech Life Manager. So Tech Life Manager says, ah, this is 
an installation, this is fine, we have all the packages and install the stuff. That works. The what? Completely independent. I mean, there was some trial, but there is from MIGTEC side, there is no, in, no interest in cooperation. I, I, I would have loved to have settled with Ms. Ms. MIGTEC people onto one format of, of the description of packages. So because we are doing the work to packaging stuff, from CTAN, uh, MIGTEC people are doing the same work. Um, it would be nice if we have one package format, if we have one revision. It's no interest. I'm, I'm fine. The, the difference is, I mean, MIGTEC is a very nice product. It's, I, I, I will never ever say something about MIGTEC as bad. It's a very good uh, product for, for Windows users. It's only uh, available for Windows. It has a nice stuff. It is long used. It's well developed. I, I, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, it's, it would be nice to merge them, to, to cooperate. It's not, it's fine with me. People can choose on Windows between the two. That's fine with me. Um, it's clear that development is done in Tech Life. I mean, uh, development in a sense also the engines. I mean, many of the programs you're using daily, the main repository for development is also Tech Life. So, of course, some like DVI PDF MX is developed somewhere else, Lua Tech, but it's pushed on a regular basis. So, this is somehow the central turning point. And so, in this sense, we, but Meek Tech is, there is, let's put it, there is no relation at all and no communication. I mean, we know what they are, what they are, he's doing, and it's good work. It's really good work. It, cannot say anything against it. Um, but I also cannot say I have never used it. I mean, I, if, yeah. And PS View is missing, I think. And that, no, it, I, I must honestly say, I, I, when I have seen this in, in Bachotech in April, I was so impressed that within half a week we did put it into Tech Life, which is not, because adding a new program is not something simple. Huh? But we wanted to have it. A free open source viewer for PS and PDF files which is also much more capable than any other currently on the, on the market in general. Yeah. As, a, as a Debian user with a big dilemma, uh, <laughs> do, I, do I stick with Tech Life 2007 or do I just uh, get Tech Life as a distribution uh, that you have prepared to install it uh, um, system-wide? I like to use, I like to have a stable system, but also I found that sometimes just need to fetch cutting edge uh, um, packages. I agree completely. This is not easy and it will not, I, I must honest, I'm, I'm stupid in some sense that a program tech life manager because I know it will be a huge program to somehow integrate it into Debian, but I didn't think about that at the time. Now, um, if you don't care for disk space, I recommend, there are two options. If you don't care for disk space, you just install Tech Live from the Debian packages 2007 because you need it because many packages depend on them, many others, so you need to have it installed. You can actually install only the necessary things or use this, uh, whatever, and then you install Tech Live 2008 with the installation program in user local, whatever, and then you can just by adding the path or not adding the, the, the path company, you can choose which tech you use. You have both worlds. Um, this is works when if you don't if you low on disk space and you want to have only tech life then it's an easy way it it is described and I can help every people you create fake packages for the, all the tech life just empty packages which tells the package management system in Debian that ah tech life is installed because you have to make the dependencies ha happy but in fact it is not installed and then you install tech life somewhere. But this is possible. I did this also in our department in the last years with Tech Life 2005. Uh, before it was packaged with 2003, I made fake packages for T-Tech because I want all of our servers were on, on clients were running Tech Life and I had to create fake packages, empty packages. These are the two options. If you are, nowadays it's not a, such a big problem uh, with disk space, then I recommend if you want to have this option, a stable upgrade Debian way, the one way, and on the other hand, where you want to just try or 
I just permanently switched and install in user local uh, tech live from the distribution and you can use both and you can switch back if for out of some strange reason nothing is working anymore. Regarding stability, would you say uh, uh, Tech Park 2008 is as stable as 2007? Yes, 100%. Why? I mean, the real thing, what is, the, everything what is new is just management stuff, yeah? I mean, this is just, uh, the real work is not this one. The real work is still writing nice tech documents. And if the stuff is installed and the, the tech compiler is installed in PDF tech and finds the passes, then there's nothing changing. Stability, of course, I mean, this problem we also have in Tech Life 2007 that there are in, in, in the package version we had in every, because it's always that one package needs an update to work with another package. And that's always the problem. And in this sense, the, the Tech Life 2008 is, is better because if there's a problem and it's fixed from the author, then you get an update also and not in one year or in two years. So you get it now then. In this sense, it, it can help, but it also can bring you, um, well, you have to trust the authors that the update stable are decent stuff to, to, to the CTAM network. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank you. See you sometime in the <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot. <laughs>